Hey everybody, this is Brother Milan again with the YouTube channel Clad with Zeal. If you have already not subscribed, go ahead and do that right now. And uh, this is part number three uh, on the book Teaching on Preaching by Dr. Jack Hiles. Uh, so this is obviously the third installment of this series. And the title of the chapter uh, in this is Preparing to Preach. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna read at the very end something first, just so you can kind of see what this uh, chapter is about and uh, what it means when it says preparing to preach, because um, it's kind of a broad uh, spectrum of, of thoughts that may be coming through your head, um, and and this will explain this a little bit better. So in the very end, on page number fifty-two, it says. The special, the special music is now over. I am approaching the pulpit. I am now standing behind the pulpit. I am now preaching. What a joy. What a total joy. What ecstasy. What total ecstasy. Oh God, use me just now. So this is like the moments before you preach. Is when it says preparing to preach, uh, this chapter is mainly referring to the preparation, like moments, like as soon as you walk in the building, um, of the church or you know maybe on your way to church so it's not something that it's like preparing to preach like uh, over a long-term preparation this is more of short-term preparation uh, tips and things like that now I will say off the bat that there are a few things that I don't really necessarily agree with um, that are different than what our church uh, what our church believes um, nothing like doctrinally di like different uh, it's just uh, I guess we would say preferences um, so I may talk about that in this video, but I'm going to kind of just, uh, stick to the points that we do agree with and, uh, expound upon those things and also, uh, have my input, and my thoughts on that. So once again, we'll start, we'll start in the, in the first page of, of chapter number three and, uh, I'll kind of make some comments as we go along and, uh, make some applications to it so you guys can learn from this as well. So, uh, the first portion of chapter the first portion of the first page on chapter three says it is time to preach in a few minutes i will be representing god as his man before his people i am to deliver his message i'm about to walk to the platform i must remember to walk correctly i must remember to stand correctly and then it goes on uh, with a simple prayer and it says lord help me to preach today as if it were the last sermon i would ever preach and I'll get into the, some of the first part later because he expounds upon uh, you know each example as far as like actually approaching the pulpit and things like that and uh, uh, posture and we'll get into that in just a moment. But what I want to talk about is um, from from this uh, from this section is where it says, "Lord, help me to preach today as if it were the last sermon I, I would ever preach." And my goal and something that I have learned is. Uh, Every time I get the opportunity to preach, which is not a lot of opportunities, mostly men's preaching night, I want to give it the best shot I can. And and if I were ever to be a pastor, had the opportunity to be a pastor or uh, in a position of leadership where I would be preaching more often, I would still consistently want to ask God to help me give it all I have each sermon. The reason behind that is, is that you might have new people show up and people are expecting to hear a great sermon, expecting to hear uh, the best that you got and you want to put your all into it. So each time I go to the pulpit, my goal is to, you know, obviously asking God to, to be able to deliver the best message uh, every single time and not be slack concerning that and not feel like, oh, this is just another time I get to preach, so I'm just going to be lazy about it. No, I want to give it 100% my best shot every time I, I walk up to that pulpit, every time I get that opportunity, whether I'm preaching a little bit or I get to preach more often. So regardless, that is a major point, and I think that's uh, uh, something that you should pray if you plan on being a pastor or a preacher one day is every time you get the opportunity to stand behind a pulpit to give it all you got and act like it is the last sermon you're ever going to preach um, and just deliver so that the people that are hearing will will benefit the most. Um, so that's, that's what I want to say about that. Now if you turn over to um, the next page, which is 42, uh, there's a comment here. It says, I am about to represent God. I must do it properly. I must not be intimidated by a pulpit. And uh, I think 
an issue that I had in the beginning is that uh, because you know not the not the actual pulpit itself, but just the the position of being behind a pulpit can be intimidating. Um, I think over time you develop that confidence when you're behind there, when you've had experience, and and now I would say I'm a lot more comfortable behind the pulpit than I was when I first started. When I first started, I was I was trembling um, because I was like, I really want to do a good job. This is one, this is really intimidating just because I'm preaching for the first time. And two, this is extremely intimidating because I'm representing Faith War Baptist Church, which is, um, you know, in my opinion, it's the greatest church because I go there. So um, it, 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 I felt like I was kind of um, more intimidated because it was a big uh, role to fill when I first preached behind that pulpit. But over time, you get more comfortable and uh, you still might have like those thoughts that come into your mind and feel intimidated, but a lot of the times you'll that'll kind of go away as you uh, get more experience. You you get more confident in the way that you stand and everything like that, and uh, you're not intimidated of the of the crowd or the congregation or anything like that. Um, and then it says uh, another highlight here. It says I must check how far I am from the people. Now we don't really have this problem at, uh, at FWBCLA. Uh, we we want to run around like uh, I think maybe like sixty to a hundred people, depending on you know the day. Like Thursdays are less and Sundays are more. Um, so it isn't it's not something I really would check for if I was the pastor or the opportunities I, I get to preach. I just it, it, that doesn't apply. You know that's a, something that doesn't apply. But I can see how in in his position, in Jack Hall's position, with a church running you know, thousands, um, that, that might be something that he's looking for, something that, um, something that might affect, uh, the preaching or whatever, but we'll, we'll kind of skip past that because it doesn't really apply. And then he talks about thing, uh, things like checking the lighting, which I don't really think about, uh, doesn't, I don't think it matter. I mean, it matters in a sense that like, yeah, you want the lights turned on, but if you're in a small building like we are, it's not going to make much much of a difference as long as the lights are turned on it's good to go um and it says i must check the temperature um sometimes we do have uh issues with the temperature but you know that that gets fixed and if it's a hot day it's a hot day if it's cold it's cold we're preaching anyways doesn't really matter um and then it goes on and says i must check the shape of the auditorium uh but the one point i want to pull out from this little um uh like uh paragraph i would say is it says i must decide with which people to make eye contact now this one i i actually find very interesting and and, and this is something that i was taught also by brother bruce mejia is uh when you're making eye contact with people like when you're actually gonna go up and preach i already know in my mind who i'm going to make eye contact with the most the ones who are going to be encouraging me the most when i'm preaching so that's something I'm thinking about when I'm preparing or about to step up to the pulpit, you know, while the uh, the singing is going on or while the uh, the reading of the scriptures is going on. And uh, I usually have a few people in my mind already that I know that are um, attentive and that I know that are going to respond well to help encourage me so um, that I can preach um, a better message or I could expound upon or I can get better feedback and that kind of thing. So it's a good point. So I agree with it. We're going to skip over um, a couple pages because I'm running short on time. Um, let's see here. So uh, another point that's made in, uh, in a paragraph here, it says, I must not be distracted from my message. Um, I must keep on course. I must use that part of service that will help my message be uh, oblivious to that part of the service that will not help. I must not allow anything to offend, or, offend me or upset me. I must not develop a spirit of criticism about any part of the service. So I guess when you're like, you know, fellowshipping or whatever before or something um, is on your mind, you want to eliminate those uh, distractions before you actually step up to preach behind the pulpit. Um, I like to conversate and have fun before I preach. Sometimes I get quiet and people notice that. Like when I get to the opportunity to preach, um, there are guys in our church that notice that I kind of distance myself from them like a few minutes before, um, you know, the, the reading of the scriptures because the, the order of service, um, they read the scriptures and then um, the, the, the preacher stands up behind the pulpit and during like the time uh, from like the start of the service and, and that time of the actual reading of the scriptures, 
I'm pretty much quiet and in my head. And uh, that, that to me is like, I'm just trying to kind of uh, uh, get my nerves out in, in prayer and that kind of thing. So it, it actually helps me eliminate those distractions. But I don't think it's necessarily wrong to like, you know, chit chat and hang out and fellowship before you actually go and preach uh, the message. And then it says, um, you know, these are some really important key points I'm about to pull out here, but it says, I must be careful about my stance. So stance is extremely important because you want to convey to the, the uh, congregation that you're confident in what you're preaching, that you're bold, that, you know, you want to utilize, you know, your hand signals or uh, uh, your hand gestures. I like to use my hands a lot when I talk. So it helps expound upon what I'm saying. It helps support what I'm saying or if I'm pounding the pulpit and that kind of thing. And you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're not slouching, you're standing up uh, straight. And that when you're ripping, um, you know, I like to point my finger or I like to, you know, uh, you know, slam the pulpit, whatever it may be. But I like to be animated when I preach. So I think that can also be included with your stance and your posture. Um, I also like to be outside the pulpit sometimes when I'm trying to make a, a strong point. So you'll notice me, um, and this is something I picked up by watching other pastors, is I don't just stay behind the pulpit the entire time. I actually move myself out. So it's something I'm actually thinking about when I'm preparing to preach is like, okay, um, you know, am I going to step outside the pulpit uh, if you were to, uh, if you're going to say it like that, like uh, kind of move around on the outside to deliver that. So what I'll do is I'll be conscious and say, okay, remind myself before I get up to preach that, hey, uh, a couple of times during the, the sermon, I want to actually excuse myself from behind the pulpit, outside the pulpit and make eye contact and, and preach a point or teach a point and then come back. Um, that's something I think about before I actually step in to the pulpit and, and it just helps me remember that. Um, and it says, I must be careful with my eyes. Um, so in this portion it says, I believe that uh, sincerity will care for this, but I must not uh, look to the ceiling while I preach or spend too much time looking to my outline. I must give straightforward look as, a straightforward look as I preach. So this goes along with what I said earlier, um, eye contact. Uh, I usually, like I said, choose a few people uh, to make eye contact with, and I already have that set in my head. And I, I do my best to remind myself before I preach not to be like looking around or, um, you know, or staring too hard at my notes. Um, sometimes I'll get stuck and I'll have to, um, you know, kind of just stare at my Bible or stare at my notes and that just comes with the nature of preaching. Some, if you're not as experienced, you're going to have to rely more on your notes. So um, this may not be uh, perfected yet, but something you can think about before you step in the pulpit is remind myself, oh, okay, hey, um, while I'm preaching, make sure that my eye contact and be careful with my eyes basically. Um, I already mentioned this, but it, it, I highlighted uh, I must be careful about the use of my hands. I already talked about how I like to use my hands during the preaching. Um, and then it says, I hope I am dressed properly. So um, our rule at Faithful Word and Brother Bruce has told us that when we preach, we want to be in a suit and tie representing God well, uh, being dressed appropriately. Um, and that's just what we do. So that's something that obviously is prepared before you leave the house. You can't, you know, you're not going to be changing at the church. So it's just, I guess that's part of the, the preparation process or whatever is uh, being dressed appropriately. Suit and tie, uh, you look presentable, um, gives you that, uh, you know, you're kind of uh, being an ambassador for Christ, if you would. You're, you're dressed well, you're clean cut, um, obviously. We don't have problem with with beards, but maybe the old IFB did, so um, it's all good. Enough with that. Um, and then another thing that was mentioned here, and this is probably the last thing I'm talking about, is is it says I must be very wise concerning any child that might bis uh, that might misbehave or baby that ma that might cry. So there's a lot of things in here that I disagree with, like the nursery thing and things like that. Obviously, you know we do have mother baby rooms that. Um, if children do get out of hand, they can be escorted there by their parent. Um, but with what I want to talk about is is in your mind before you go preach at a church like ours um, or a like-minded church, just be ready for those cries. Just be ready to, that you know children are fussy. I have a baby, and you just got to deal with it as a preacher. 
and you just got to preach over it uh you, sometimes they may sound louder and they sound like a distraction but just stay focused and it's not that big of a deal it really isn't the baby's crying or out of hand and we still want them in the service so um i think that's up to the parents discretion and obviously if the pastor the pastor at the time at that church um you know they get to set the rule for you know what is dictated during that but when i preach um i'm not going to tell somebody hey you need to like get your kid out of here or something like that i just preach and um i hear crying all like all, every, pretty much every time i've ever preached i've heard a baby cry and it does not bother me whatsoever so that's something i've always kept in my mind when i'm ready to preach is hey there may be that distraction no big deal just keep preaching it's not a big deal um so that chapter, um, like I said, there's some things I agree with and some things I don't, uh, but I try to hit the, the key points as far as the preparation, like walking up to the pulpit, um, the things you think about before you actually, uh, you know, from when the service starts or, you know, from your house basically to the, to the pulpit. That's the time frame I'm talking about when I mean preparing to preach or when the, uh, the chapter is referring to uh, preparing to preach. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a little extensive, a little long, um, and I know I had to kind of run through a lot of points, but I wanted to hit as much as I could. So thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to stay clad with zeal.